You know, it's commonly I hear a lot of um, when I work with a lot of the businesses and, and some of the coaches that I work with, a lot of the time it's um, I'm starting to wonder, you know, I hear this thing that, you know, why can't I keep any PTs or find good PTs or why do we struggle to get PTs to last longer than three months? You know, is it the PT failing the industry or is it the industry is actually failing the PT today? You know, uh, it's really hard today because a lot of gyms don't onboard contractors well. Uh, they don't make contractors a part of the team. Uh, they don't teach the guys how to fundamentally run their business um, because they think that once they get their certification, they know how to run a business. Um, then they're told to do all these CC courses and, and training courses where they're, they're supposed to learn exercise, but a lot of them don't come from the fitness industry or the sport or have sporting backgrounds. So a lot of the time they're actually just learning. They go to these courses and they a one day, two day course and they learn how to do this exercise, but then they're given the programming and the principles and they're expected to actually go and take a a, a type of demographic or, or person or age or someone with injury or mobility or you know flexibility flexibility issues you know and go deliver this programming that they sort of don't even know how to do yet themselves because they have they've had two days to practice it um, and it's like muscle memory we know you've got to do things over a thousand times to even basically get good at it so that fundamentally you, your mechanics <laughs> work work fundamentally with a lot of programming so uh, yeah, we, we are setting the PT up to fail a lot of the time. These eight-week, 12-week educational courses to be a PT and you don't come from a sporting background or a, a training background yourself, you know, we're, we're actually probably hurting the industry and then we're also probably setting the prospect or the member up for bad experiences as well. Oh, I had a PT once, he was terrible, or I had a PT once, he really didn't deliver much, you know, because a lot of the time we see a lot of PTs today, they're literally just fitness instructors. I came up through a day where we actually had fitness instructors and we went around and did the programming and progressed members of the gym. And obviously, you know, that, that cost a lot in wages. So they went to the contracting PT model back in the day and then became a revenue stream. And now PT and, and group classes and functional training classes are actually becoming a predominant part of the industry because the industry has become so focused on pushing numbers in the club that managers and, and, and staff and MCs are focus so much on driving numbers and sales that the, the service industry side of our industry is actually falling apart and when we talk about retention and, and stuff like that we all know it's human contact uh, that keeps people in clubs and the more human contact points that you have the longer they last as a member um, but a lot of the time if you look at 24-hour clubs most of the time once that staff member goes home and locks the doors at the night and they don't have a, a PT base or culture in their gym no one's servicing those members they're running around lost in your club so, you know, we are failing, the industry is failing the PT, you know, we need to um, onboard them right, we need to give them progression, we need to coach them, we need to give them more advice, and we need to literally have some type of structure where you actually don't make them feel like they're not a part of the team and they are an entity in your business, not just a cash flow. You know, they're, they're a crucial part of your business. They'll keep your, your levers lower. Um, and those members that have those human contact points are gonna keep a longer lasting member or a more valuable member to your club. So, you know, we've got to make sure that this is crucially portrayed across the industry and, and we are falling down. If in Australia, a PT only lasts about three months, there's a problem. There's a problem. Back when I started, usually it was an MC lasted three months and a PT was about five years. So uh, it was a lot different back then. And now that uh, functional training and group classes and, and uh, boutiques are, are predominantly on the scene very much now, you know, those things are taken away from the PT as well. So it's even making it harder. So PTs are now falling into not just, you know, doing group fitness, but they're actually doing group personal training, so to speak now, as, as, as we sort of say now, it's uh, they're sort of cruising around doing group classes because they need the security. So, you know, a lot of the time they're still um, one foot in, one foot out in the industry and not making that big leap to to take on full time because they're scared because a lot of people are getting thrown in the deep end and they're, and they're failing. We're, we're sending them to sink and swim. So I guess that's a bit of the naked truth about why PTs are learning because we're, we're failing them. We're not onboarding them properly. We're not, um, you know, helping them do the right courses, the right ongoing education that they actually do need. And we've got to understand that a lot of these CEC providers and, and training that they're getting uh, the, the coaching that they're getting, guys, they, they, a lot of these people, you need to screen them better for it as well because a lot of them don't know how to actually do the exercise yet either. So two days doesn't make you 
a, a master coach or a whatever. Like people are saying they're trying to turn PTs into coaches, but you know, two days ain't going to turn you into a coach. The practice and the you know the perfect practice and learning it and doing it yourself and practicing it, and then be before you actually go, you know, we should practice things with our peers before we demonstrate it on any of our members or clientele. Because if you're not confident and can't deliver it, there's a high risk you may injure that client. Uh, and we're not teaching them to work with their practitioners, stay inside your scope. Uh, a lot of PTs with their egos uh, pr uh, do a lot of things outside of scope of practice as well. So we need to make sure that we hone that stuff in. And as a, as a gym operator and owner, you need to make sure that you crucially know how many of your clients are getting screened, how, what their conversion rates are, you know, coach them in sales, coach them in customer care, uh, and have the same processes as that your, your mem managers and uh, sales guys have. So, you know, they should be in the team training with your sales guys. They should be in the team training with your gym. And they should be your eyes and ears when your staff aren't around the club as well. So, you know, we've got to start working better and stop blaming the PTs. Um, because it's easy to point the finger. True leaders don't blame others. We own our own problems and we own our own problems in our facilities. So, you know, it's up to us to fix it. Uh, and I know there's a lot of coaches out there trying to uh, make the effort, but at the same time, guys, if you're passionate about your industry, it's, you know, we've got a, ed education in Australia is just as much as a money spinner now as fitness itself. So just be careful. Make sure that you, if you're passionate and you want to improve your industry, yes, it's great to make money from it, but make sure you're delivering value. And, and we've got to stop lying to the PT, telling them they're going to make 30 grand a month, you know, coming in and doing online. Look, earn your stripes. Fuck the niche. You're not going to own a niche in this space unless you're good at it. And, you know, work on becoming a 100K trainer yourself first and then grow. Don't try to be like everyone and try to run before you walk. All right, get your stripes, learn your business, learn your craft, and then you don't worry about rushing. There's, there's enough people in the industry and the percentages of people that are overweight, there's plenty of clientele for you. Don't think that they're not going to be there and that you need to run before you walk like all these other people because they're going to come unstuck. And if you can't keep the culture and service, because it's like anything else, guys, you're either a high volume, high turnover business with no service, or you're a service, high end, high price business. So we need to make sure that we're teaching these guys that you don't have to run before you walk and give them the fundamental skills of actually being a successful personal trainer. The big fella from the EFC, it's Bumpo with the Naked Truth. Let's stop failing them in our industry and make our industry more and better. And I'm glad to see that a lot of clubs are spending more time actually investing in their staff and investing in their trainers. Because, guys, it's crucial. We've got to stop setting our industry up to fail.